Programming with Godot and Gemini for lazy people. I generate a list of strings in Gemini. I considered in my prompt a reference to the website Darwin Awards, where you will find deaths for the most idiotic reasons possible. I create a new script in Godot. Note that it is essential to put the word at tool at the beginning of the script. I copy and paste and place the list in an array as follows in the image. Note that Gemini, very cleverly, follows a grammatical rule and leaves some placeholders in programming, we call them fields, between square brackets. Now we will replace the brackets as we would in a normal text, but in game time. The first step is to reduce the fields to a list that we can use. Note that in some cases, like in line 16, we have the positive quality field. I would have to generate a large list of qualities, and in this case, nothing prevents me from eliminating the line completely to reduce the work. We now have name, dates of birth and death, relationship, object, cause of death. Note that I changed them all to lowercase to make things easier. Also in some cases, I simply removed and replaced the field. Now we can create other generators for each of the fields. The relationship structure is the simplest, and didactically speaking, it will be repeated in all but the dates. It consists of obtaining an element from an array using the randy function, which generates a random number limited by the number of elements in the array. In other words, any element can come about by chance. The random date of birth and death has some important characteristics and is more complex. Firstly, I didn't want to deal with leap years. The second is that the years have to represent the current era of history, and the weights have long lives too, just on a whim. The minimum age is 12 years old, otherwise you wouldn't have to deal with children's epitaphs and it would be more work. Twelve seems like a good age to do stupid things. With these rules in mind, the month is basically the same scheme as the relationship. The days are a random value plus one, since the randy function starts from zero and the days do not. Years use a ready-made function that gives a value between a start and an end. The location parameter is more complex. I'm not going to go into depth in this tutorial so I left it with the default n. When passed, it will search the dictionary at the end of the function for that respective location and return the date according to the grammar. The name generator is in another file, precisely so it can be used elsewhere in the game. I'm using a rule based on some people in Northern Europe where we don't find family names, but rather the father's name. He is 1. If I don't provide the gender, he chooses one at random. Two, first name is generated. Three, make a draw that says there is one of six possibilities of not reporting the father's name. This means that we have some people with only their first name. Four, make a draw that says that there is one of four possibilities to attach a profession to the name. One point that I found important is that I couldn't get a prompt that generates a list of objects that look cool. I had to create this one by hand. In the name of laziness, I created a property that would store a ready-made epitaph. I created an event so that when the node is placed in the scene, it automatically generates new text, so whenever I duplicate an object in the scene, it will have a unique text. The end result will be something like this. Then just integrate it into your game's trigger system.